Hey guys, this is going to be the first part in a four part video series showing how I modeled this T70 tank. So the idea here is in the past I've done like live kind of um, trying to record the process as I do it and there's a lot of issues with that like if I make a mistake I have to go back and redo parts so I can do the audio over again. It's a little redundant sometimes um, and it just takes a while because it slows down the modeling process and it has so much more detail than needs to be there. So what I'm going to do for this series is I've broken down this model into um, separate chunks. So I've got two, the first two videos are going to be showing how to do the hull, like to this exact, um, like every, everything on the hull, including the fenders um, and all that is going to be in these first two videos. Second video, or the third video is going to be this turret. And the fourth video, it's going to be um, doing these tracks, which I've got my own track tutorial um, already out there. But the idea is that I'll show a more de like detailed um, doing like the track link and the wheels specifically. The process is the same, but hopefully there's a bit more depth to it. So if you need to like get a reference of like how it's done process-wise, go to the other video. And if you need to, or if you're interested in seeing um, an actual example being made, um, this video should be, or the, the fourth video in this series should be pretty good. So to start with, um, I always put down schematics, so I'll just unhide those. Um, so I just set these up. Um, I've shown how to do that in the past, and it's a little time consuming to show the process, so I'm going to avoid that for now. But if there's uh, enough interest, I might um, do another more detailed video on lining stuff because I have some better techniques now. Um, but yeah, so you have your schematics and then um, I also have this centering piece that is a horizontal line that goes between the two ends of the tank and then a vertical line at the center point and I use that to create this mid plane. Um, so, that, so what I'm going to do in this first video is I'm going to do half the hull and um, do all the symmetric details. So you see like this, these hooks are symmetric but this piece here um, is not so I'm going to do the hooks, but not the asymmetric parts. And then the idea is you do everything that's symmetric, you pattern it, you mirror it, and then you do all the asymmetric details, which will be the second video. So that's that's sort of the process there. So I'll hide this for now. And um, I'm also going to hide the schematics a little later. Um, for now, they're going to be helpful. But I'm going to get started. So I broke this down even further. So there's the basic hull, which you can kind of see is outlined here, all the parts that are included there. Um, so it's got some of the details omitted. Um, it's just kind of the basic shape and the fenders since they um, pattern over. And then I've got this tow hook as a separate piece, which I'm not going to go into too much detail about how I modeled this. It's a pretty straightforward little piece to model. I'll talk about like how to position it, um, but I don't want to make these videos too long. And then um, this rear um, like deck. So the, this piece here is also here, so I did it in this step and then patterned it, and then just the mirror step to get everything put together. So um, I'll get right into it. So for the basic hull, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start out by just drawing a um, sketch that's the um, from the side view that's kind of the profile of the tank. And um, you see these construction geometries, those are to align with the other views. So this point you can't really see on this side view, but you can see on the front and top views. So I use these lines and go to um, a 45 degree angle so I can line this point up um, vertically with the um, top view. And I do the same for the horizontal with the front view to align these pieces. And everything else is kind of traced from this reference uh, material. So that's that's how I do that, get out of this sketch, and it's going to jump me forward again, so I need to um, go ahead and roll back. Um, so let's see, roll back. So the first step, um, I extrude it halfway. So I, I start from the mid-plane, and I extrude it to the um, extent of the that portion of the hull. So just out to here. And then um, for resin 3D printing, having hollow models requires less resin, and it also reduces the cross-sectional area of the print, which um, reduces the, air, the chance of it adhering to the vat and um, the print failing. 
So that's kind of the reason I hollowed my models out. Um, mostly the, the latter, mostly f to prevent failures of printing, but it's also a nice little touch that it um, goes ahead and reduces the volume of um, resin that you need to use. So I hollow it out now, because if you start adding details, it the hollowing process might get a little bit more complicated where it's trying to, like if the fenders were on, for instance, it would try to um, hollow into the fenders and that can cause errors and stuff, which it will throw errors and it won't work. So that's why I do it now rather than later, because um, you don't really need to do it later. You just need the basic shape to be hollow. You don't need to really nitpick it too much. And then, um, so that, that's just making the basic shape of the hull. I make a basic fender, just tracing the fender, and it, you can see it's a little thicker than it really would be. That is because I'm doing this in 172nd scale or 20 millimeter if you um, do wargaming. Um, so it's a little thicker because that's just a kind of constraint of the printer. You, you, you don't want it to be so thin that it turns into like a paper flimsy little piece because it'll break. Like, because once you cure it, it's really brittle, and like you tap it, and it just shatters. So it's thicker, just as a kind of structural constraint. Um, let's see, what is this? This is um, so you can see here. I'm just adding the little piece of the fender that kind of goes to the hull to kind of round it out, and it adds some support here. Technically, it should be thinner again, but um, it, it it's fine. <laughs> um, let's see. So I, I did this the other day. Here I'm adding um, a little extrude just so that the plate has some depth to it. Or like it, it, you can tell that it's a separate plate. Because something I found and I'm doing more recently on my models is, you know, the tanks are built. They, they've got these features like this is a separate piece. This is a plate that that's not really characterized too well by the fact that I'm doing everything as a single part. But I feel that adding this little like very thin extrude it just kind of sets this plate apart um, and it adds to the detail. Um, it shows that it's a separate like piece that's mounted to everything else rather than just being a homogeneous single part. And then I do the same thing down here for this lower plate, which um, another thing is this upper plate is angled at a steeper slope, so it's a little thinner. So I tried to replicate that by having this upper plate or this, this front plate um, have a thicker um, like panel line than this top plate because the top plate being at a steeper angle was deemed to be eligible to be thinner while still maintaining the same standard of protection. And then um, there's just a fillet on the fender because you can, s if you use reference material like museum photos and stuff, you'll notice that that is a characteristic. And then um, these, this is kind of the process of doing these um, supports, the brackets for the fender. So I start out making um, just these pieces that are tracing the side view. So you see there's a bracket there, one there. They're, they're pretty subtle um, there and there. So I do that. Um, you'll notice that these are at a different angle from this piece slightly because they're um, perpendicular to the fender, which does have an angle. So that's kind of that process. And then let's see, what do I do here? Okay, and then I go to, so something important with these is I kept them as separate parts for now because that way I can do cuts through them without risking cutting the um, main body because I, I can just isolate the cut to these parts. Now I'm gonna do, there, you see how there's these kind of details, these um, lines along the fender. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create um, a sketch on the top plane that traces one of these lines and then I'm going to project that onto the fender, which is another reason it's good to have um, these pieces separate because otherwise it would make discontinuities in this line and the next step wouldn't work. Um, so that traces the fender, which is very nice. You don't have to go into a, like a sketch on the side and trace it. You can just do a projection. And then I do a sweep with a circular profile just to get that um, kind of detail. It's, again, exaggerated, but um, it looks pretty good when you print it and then pattern it to get the full extent here. Um, so that kind of gives those details that are present on the schematic. And then um, here, since these are at a different angle, I do them separately, but here I um, just cut out. So I cut out this top triangle piece. I can show the, um, this is the sketch. I cut out this top triangle and I cut out this central triangle to kind of match how the actual bracket looks. 
because it's hollow, right? It's not going to be a full, like, just block because you do need to mount it and stuff. So there's, that's something I haven't added, but there's going to be bolts that fix the fender to the um, hull. Um, so the model's not entirely complete. There's a few details that I omitted because I didn't want to bulk everything up, and they're pretty straightforward. And then I do the same process here where I do another sketch in very much the same way. But since these are all aligned, I can just cut through all three of them. And when I cut them, um, I'm setting, I set the feature scope to be those three bodies. That way it cuts all three of them while they're separate bodies. And then I just combine those bodies together to get them attached to the hull and um, do some filleting. Um, let's see, where's that? Yeah, you have to do them, s no, you don't have to do them separate. Where, where, where was this? Oh, okay, it's, since it has a different radius, it's this inner corner. And then um, all the other corners have the same radius. So I do those all at once. And then here, this is um, a little subtle, but there's th another plate. So it's kind of just cutting this because you, you can't really see here, but when you look at reference photos, there's this little taper, this little chamfer, I suppose, that is perpendicular to this rear plate because it's part of the rear plate. And then the last piece for this step was just to add, do similar thing to what I did up here, but for the rear fender, just to add some support and also you can see that there's geometry there. It's not just floating fender. So that's that's how I do the basic shape of the hull. Um, the tow hook is just modeling the tow hook. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, but I'm not gonna bulk it because this video is already getting longer than I was hoping. So what I do is I do something very similar to how I centered the um, model, where I draw a center line on the tow hook here I draw a plane on that center line, so that plane is on that center line, and then it's perpendicular to the front plane. And then I will do um, this piece, so I do a sketch that's kind of the profile. And this is kind of eyeballed because you don't really have that view, so this is using reference from like museum photos again to get that um, kind of shape roughly what it should look like um, and kind of positioned. And then um, do this back plate, um, do some fillets on the corners. So this, this is kind of fillets along um, the hook to um, round it out because they are cast, so they're going to be more rounded. And then this is just the corners here. Um, and then a few details, some bolts, and that's, that's the extent of doing the tow hook, which is symmetric, so I only need to do one, and then when I pattern it, the other will show up. And then for the rear details, it's just this piece, which is a bunch of extrudes. So you can see in the feature tree, um, just extruding these, um, doing patterns. So this is just a linear pattern going across and up um, in the sketch. So um, not too bad. This is, um, there's the rear hook here. So this is the same process as what I did for the other hook. So I'm not gonna belabor the point, but this time it's centered on the mid plane of the vehicle and I'll hide these views. So it's centered on the mid plane of the vehicle and um, when you, pa it looks a little thin right now, when you mirror it, it doubles the thickness, right? So it's gonna look better. And that's kind of, this is all the stuff that's symmetric across the mid plane. So I do it all at once. And then I just go to this mirror, hit it, and then it will do the pattern and it will double the model, make it symmetric about that axis. Sorry, about that plane. And that's pretty much how that goes. So yeah, that'll, that'll be the first video. Um, I should note, I probably should have said this at the beginning, but um, some good practice when modeling anything is to basically save after every operation or at least every operation that you wanna commit because, well, I've got a few reasons. Well, it's, it's kind of, the, the obvious reason is you don't wanna lose progress. Um, it actually makes it run faster because it kind of rebuilds the model, I find, and when it's saved, it's, it's kind of caching less, I suppose. I don't know the exact, exactly what's happening, but I find that the model runs smoother when it's saved. I don't know if it's like caching something or what, but it works better in my experience. So that's one thing. And also um, as an anecdote, I had a job interview um, several years ago and they had a SolidWorks um, skills test. And you know, I did fine on that. The um, criti criticism I got or the feedback I got is that I wasn't saving while I was doing the um, modeling. So it is something that employers might look for is, you know, they don't want to pay you to do the same work twice. So are you saving regularly and kind of logging your progress so that if something 
goes wrong, like a power outage or something, you don't lose everything. So as a personal anecdote, that's um, something I have had um, mentioned, which, um, you know, if you're looking for employment in um, CAD or something, it's not a bad thing to know that that's something they do look for in those tests or those like skill tests where they'll give you a part and tell you to model it. Um, in this case, they gave me a physical part and told me to model it with calipers and a ruler, which is kind of fun, but um, a little stressful because they're just watching over my shoulder. But anyway, that's um, this first part. And the second part, I will get to, um, I'll let it load, do, 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 the, um, a new stage um, where I add the kind of radiators um, and some other details that are asymmetrical. Okay, so um, here's kind of what that looks like with all those other details added. So most of it's like this panel, um, just some radiators, exhausts, that kind of thing. So I'll talk about that in the next video. So thanks for watching.